Dear delegates, entrusted by the National People's Congress Standing Committee, I hereby present to you the explanations on the draft charity law of the People's Republic of China. One, the necessity of making a charity law. Charity law is an important piece of law for social causes. It is a basic and comprehensive law for building institutions in the charity sector. Making a charity law has high significance and relevance. Number one, making the charity law is necessary for promoting charity and regulating charitable activities. Over the past 20 years since the initiation of the opening up policy, Charity efforts in China have been developing very rapidly. Social donations have grown to, from 10 billion RMB in 2006 to around 100 billion today. As philanthropy grows rapidly in China, the charity sector is also witnessing new dynamics and problems. For instance, inadequate internal governance, operational irregularities, absence of industry self-discipline, and also the lack of vitality of the um, charity culture. All these areas need support and promotion. These and other problems need to be guided and regulated with a charity law in order to promote the sound development of philanthropy in China. Number two, making a charity law is an important step for advancing the legislation in the social cause and promoting the rule of law in China. At the fourth and fifth plenum of the 18th CPC Central Committee, it was proposed that efforts should be made to promote rule of law and uh, advance legislation in major areas so as to build a full-fledged legal and regulatory framework. Through years of concerted efforts, we have made the welfare donations law and Red Cross law and a slew of other charity-related laws. The State Council has also come up with administrative regulations, and local rules and regulations have also been put into place. But on balance, the legal landscape still lags behind, and it lacks consistency and coherence. It is not in line with the new realities of the booming charity in China. Since 2008, more than 800 NPC delegates have proposed over 27 proposals and 29 suggestions. These have reflected the aspirations of the society. Making a charity law will plug up the gap in this area, and it is also an important step for building a socialist legal system. It is also imperative for us to expedite rule of law and promoting the governance of our country. Number three, making a charity law is a practical measure for us to uh, win the battle against poverty and build the uh, moderately prosperous society in all respects. At the fifth plenum of the 18th CPC Central Committee and also the Poverty Relief Central Work Conference, it was proposed that poverty relief will be an important indicator for building the moderately prosperous society in all respects. Therefore, we need to marshal the resources of the society and make sure that charity can be an important part of this effort. Making a charity law will encourage private sector, social organizations, individuals and other players to engage in charity efforts to relieve poverty and support each other. This will, uh, this will also help us achieve targeted poverty alleviation and it is conducive to building a moderately prosperous society in China and reducing poverty across the country. Number four, making a charity law is necessary for us to carry forward the fine traditions of the Chinese country and foster a value system of uh, socialist China. Developing charity and philanthropy in China will help us develop a culture to support philanthropy and carry forward the fine virtues and traditions of the Chinese nation. Making a charity law will help us advocate 
support and encourage good Samaritan deeds, mutual assistance, and encourage people to give. This will help the members of the society to carry forward the um, moral power of socialist value systems. And people will also practice the values of socialist country, and this will lend sustained support to the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. The NPC Standing Committee exercises the power of legislation for China. And the delegates of the NPC are important members of the legislature. They come from the people and they represent the voices and desire of our society. The deliberation of the charity law by the NPC is helpful for us to achieve scientific and democratic legislation. It pours the wisdom of the society and elevates charity to the state level to promote philanthropy across the country. This is beneficial for us to foster an enabling environment across the country to implement the charity law faithfully. Second, the philosophies and guiding principles and the process of work for making a charity law. Making a charity law is based on the socialist uh, spirits of China. It is also based on the messages of the third, fourth and fifth plenum of the 18th CPC Central Committee and the 18th CPC National Congress. It is also inspired by the Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thoughts, the Deng Xiaoping thoughts and the three represents. We hope to share the results of our development and uh, draw upon the uh, experiences we have made through the years to promote philanthropy and charity. By doing so, we can inspire the members of the society to give and to help each other. And people will be able to engage in more good deeds and to promote the establishment of a legal safeguard for philanthropy with Chinese characteristics. In making the charity law, we have paid attention to the following areas. First, we will earnestly implement the arrangements of the central government and highlight the philanthropy as an important measure for uh, relieving poverty. Since the National uh, Congress, the 18th CPC National Congress, the central government has proposed clear-cut requirements for the development of charity in fighting poverty. According to the requirements of the central government, the charity law draft encourages and supports charity as an important measure to draw upon social resources and channel the resources to the anti-poverty area. This will also be combined with social assistance to form synergies and win the battle against poverty. This also showcases the concerted efforts and resolve of the party and central government in narrowing in income gaps. Secondly, we pay attention to the policy design of the charity law and pursue innovation in institutions and mechanisms. We will faithfully implement the messages and important spirits proposed by President Xi Jinping at the Central Anti-Poverty Work Conference. On the basis of the rules existing in the charity sector, we will continue to perfect the institution's mechanisms and, prov and provide an enabling legal environment for the development of philanthropy in China. Third, making charity law is based on our national circumstances and practicalities, and we will continue to promote regulation in the process of development and uh, advanced development through regulation. The charity law is firmly rooted in our national circumstances. At the same time, we have drawn upon the useful practices and experiences in other countries to promote the charity with Chinese social characteristics. The development of a charity law is aimed at providing an enabling and clean charity environment for charity. 
after the approval of the central government, the making of a charity law was incorporated as part of the legislation plan for the 11th and 12th National People's Congress Standing Committee. It was also incorporated as part of the work plan for the 2015 National People's Congress Standing Committee. In October 2015, the Internal and Judicial Affairs Committee of the NPC submitted the draft to the 12th National People's Congress and the 17th meeting for deliberation. After the deliberation and the discussion, in October, December 2015, the NPC submitted the uh, draft to the 18th meeting for further discussion and deliberation. And it was also discussed and deliberate on, deliberated on at the fourth meeting of the 12th National People's Congress. Based on the rules of procedure of uh, legislation law and NPC uh, standing committee, on January the 11th of 2016, this was pr printed and sent for comment by National People's Congress delegates, and it was also released on the NPC website for public comment. At the same time, the Committee of Law of NPC and the Legal Affairs Committee of NPC have taken on board the suggestions and opinions of the NPC delegates and CPPCC members and also suggestions from the general public to conduct continuous revisions of the draft. The central government attaches great importance to the, the revision of the cha charity law. On February the 18th, 2016, President Xi Jinping chaired the Central Policy Bureau Standing Committee conference and listened to the report made by the NPC Standing Committee. The President agreed in principle to the suggestions uh, on the uh, making of charity law and has made important guidance to the revision of the law. According to the guidance of the central government, we have made further amendment to the law. On the basis of the above-mentioned work, we have submitted the draft of uh, charity law of the People's Republic of China for further deliberation. Third, the main contents of the charity law. The charity law consists of general provisions, charitable organizations, charitable fundraising, charitable donations, charitable trusts, charitable assets, charitable services, information disclosure, promotion measures, supervision and management, legal responsibilities and appendix. It, it consists of altogether 112 articles in 12 chapters. First, the definition of uh, charity law. Charitable activities refer to those good deeds in the area of anti-poverty and disaster relief endeavors. This is a focus of our charity development. It also includes those activities which are beneficial for public interests based on the national conditions and in combination with the development of uh, charity in China. Charitable activities can be conducted by natural persons, legal persons, and other social organizations, either in cash or in other forms of assets to promote the assistance to the sick, the poor, the old, the orphaned, and those disabled people, and also priority citizens. Efforts can also be made in disaster relief areas. It also includes endeavors to promote educational sports and cultural activities and environmental endeavors as well. This has clearly defined a, a very broad space for the development of charity. Number two, the organization and regulation of charity. According to the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee, we will give priority to the development of industry associations science and technology sectors, charity sectors, and urban-rural service communities, and it should be registered. Number one, we should clearly define the definition of uh, charity and procedure of establishment. First, charitable organizations refer to those non-profit organizations established according to law and uh, whose purpose is for public interests. 
Charitable organizations can take the form of uh, foundations, social organizations, social service organizations, etc. Number two, we have clearly defined the requirements for the setting up of charitable organizations. Charitable or organizations shouldn't make uh, for-profit activities and it should have necessary assets and work for public good. Number three, the charitable organizations should be registered with civil affairs authorities at or above the county level. Those foundations, social organizations, and uh, service organizations already established can apply to the civil affairs authorities for approval as a charitable organization. Number two, the code of conduct and internal governance. First, the child charitable organizations should conduct activities in accordance with law and articles of association. It should establish internal governance structures and define its decision-making, ex execution and supervision, and other responsibilities and uh, obligations. It should follow the standard accounting procedures of the country and setting up uh, accounting supervision procedure. It should be subject to government oversight as well. Second, the founders, donors and management staff of the organization shouldn't use their related connections to undermine the interests of the organization or the interests of the beneficiaries and the general public. Third, the organizations shouldn't engage or engage in or finance those activities which may undermine state security or public interests. They should not receive donations with illegal or immoral strings attached. Fourth, the residual assets after li liquidation should be transferred to uh, charitable organizations with the same or similar mission statements, where there is no provisions in the Articles of Association, the assets will be transferred to the above-mentioned organizations by the civil affairs authorities, and the information will be made public. Third, information disclosure. Number one. Charitable organizations should disclose their articles of association and the information related to decision-making, execution, supervision and its members. And it should also make public the information required by the State Council and the Civil Affairs Authorities. The organization should also disclose its annual reports, including financial and accounting reports, and the breakdown of annual um, donations and the use of the donations. It should also disclose information related to the management, the projects and also the compensation package of the staff. The information disclosed should be genuine, authentic, complete and timely. Number two, the law has distinguished between public fundraising and targeted fundraising and also the information disclosure accordingly. Number three, Information related to state security, trade secrets, uh, personal information, and those information such as names, domicile, address, which are required to be um, confidential by the trust of the uh, charitable organization shouldn't be made public. Third, the fundraising and donations. The fundraising activities should be regulated. According to the charity law, fundraising includes public fundraising as well as targeted fundraising, and there are special provisions for the public fundraising. First, we will appropriately expand the players of uh, public fundraising, and we have clearly defined the requirements and qualifications for making public fundraising. 
Those organizations which have been registered with authorities for over two years can apply for the qualifications for public fundraising. They should have appropriate internal governance and uh, regular and lawful operations. And the civil affairs authorities should issue a pu public fundraising certificate accordingly. If the organizations are deemed eligible, the civil affairs authorities can directly issue a public fundraising certificate to the applicants. Number two, the forms and requirements of uh, public fundraising. Charitable organizations can set up donation boxes in the public, and they can also engage in charitable concerts, competitions, and galas, and uh, other forms of uh, charitable activities to raise uh, public funds. And they should be conducted within the area under the jurisdiction of the civil affairs authorities. But the donations of donors are not subject to geographical uh, restrictions. Online public fundraising should be conducted on information platforms designated by the civil affairs authorities. They can also uh, publish fundraising information on their own website. Third, targeted uh, fundraising should be conducted within those founders, council members, and uh, uh, other members of the organization. They shouldn't engage in fundraising um, in the public forum. In addition, according to the charity law, donors should honor the commitments according to the agreement of the donation. If the donor has promised to make contributions for the use of uh, um, poverty alleviation or disaster relief, and they have done so in written agreement, in case of failure to deliver the contribution, the organization and other beneficiaries can require the donor to make their contribution. Fourth, charitable trusts. Charity trusts are the entrusting of assets by a truster to a trustee so that the trustee can conduct the management and usage of the assets in the name of the truster. Under the trust chapter, we have the following provisions. First, the trust needs to have a filing system or go through a filing procedure. The organization should have a written form of a designation of those trusters, trustees, and the supervisors. And the truster should submit within seven days upon signing the agreement to the civil affairs authorities above the county level for a filing of information. Second, the scope of trusters. The trusters can entrust the assets to those qualified charitable organizations or and trust companies in case where the um, trusted organization cannot discharge their obligations, the truster can change the trustee. Third, the obligations of truster and the supervisors. The management and uh, usage of the assets should be made on a basis of faith and uh, caution as well as uh, honesty. The truster can also appoint the supervisor according to specific circumstances, and the supervisors should supervise and oversize, oversee the use of the assets in order to protect the interests of the truster and the beneficiaries. Fifth, the assets of charitable organizations. The use of charitable assets bear directly on the realization of charitable purposes. We have the following provisions in the charity law. First, the assets of the organization should be used exclusively for charitable purposes according to the Articles of Association and Donation Agreements. It shouldn't be divided among the founders, donors, or other members of the organization. No organization or individual should divide, embezzle, 
retain or take for personal use the uncharitable assets. Second, if an organization wishes to make investments of uh, the charitable assets, they should be based on the principle of safety and effectiveness and should be conducted in accordance with law. The proceeds from investments should be solely used for charitable purposes. Major investment decisions should be agreed upon by more than two-thirds of the decision makers. And the owners and uh, staff of the organization shouldn't work in or receive compensation in the invested company. Third, the organization should conduct for and effective charitable operation of the assets and follow the basic principles of uh, minimizing costs and expenses. For those organizations with public fundraising qualifications, their annual expenditure should be no less than 70% of the average income of the previous three years, their annual management cost should be no more than 15% of the total cost of or total expenditure of the year. Other costs and management expenditures should be defined by the uh, civil affairs authorities finance authorities and taxation authorities under the state council, where there is provision in the donation agreement in terms of the uh, expenditure and also management cost, the agreement will take precedence. Six, charitable services. Charitable services are part and parcel of the charitable endeavor. In the charity law, we have the following provisions in this regard. First, if charitable organizations recruit volunteers for charitable services, they should disclose all the related information and inform the volunteers any possible risks that might arise in the process of the service. Second, they should conduct real-time registration of the volunteers to record the time, the work, and evaluation of the voluntary service. Upon request by the volunteers, the organizations should issue a voluntary service certificate to the volunteers free of charge. Third, the voluntary services should be appropriate to the age, educational level, techno, te technical and uh, physical conditions of the volunteers. The organization should provide necessary supports to the volunteers and protect the lawful interests and rights of the volunteers. In case where there might be physical danger involved in the voluntary service, the organization should buy liability insurance for the volunteers in case there might be risks involved. Seven, the promotion measures of the charitable cause. The draft law devotes a special chapter to the promotion measures of the charitable endeavor. And particularly, the draft law has made a provisions for the uh, special taxation concessions of the donations. First, the charitable organization, the donors and the beneficiaries enjoy special tax concessions. Second, the draft law will implement the spirits of the Central Anti-Poverty Work Conference and uh, give special tax concessions to those charitable activities aimed at relieving poverty. Third, regarding the deductions of uh, large sum contributions, according to the charity law, if a company's spending on charitable donations exceeds the limit of deductions from its taxable income in a certain year, the excess amount can be carried over and deducted from the taxable income in the following three years. In addition, the draft law has also made uh, specific requirements and provisions regarding the management, supervision, service guidance, and also other illegal uh, activities and legal responsibilities regarding the charity law. This is the explanation on the draft charity law of the People's Republic of China presented for your deliberation. Thank you.